Welcome to another installment of Beyond the Tee podcast with the great Carmen Tigano, longtime Tennessee uh, and college athletic administrator who's got story after story and relationships after relationships. I'm Brent Hubbs with VolQuest.com. Carmen, we got a good one today. We got a special guest, a legendary coach in college athletics who's got his own ties to Tennessee, right? Yeah, Coach Jackie Sherrill. We're really lucky to have Coach Sherrill on today. Uh, this is part of the series that we're going to be doing in lieu of the Johnny Majors Classic, which features uh, uh, Tennessee going up to play Pittsburgh on September the 11th at 3.30. And Coach Sherrill was a very major part, no pun intended, of Coach Majors' career while, while, while he was successful. And we're lucky to have Coach Sherrill on today. We're going to tell a few stories, talk a little bit about Pitt, how they brought 275 freshmen in in fall 73, <laughs> and um, enjoy some stories here today, Brent. Yeah, C- Coach Cheryl, as we get started, just can can you trace back how you got to know Coach Majors and, and just your first interactions with him, you know, kind of coach to coach, and, and what led you guys to, to becoming good friends and, and guys who work together? Well, how I got – he was at Arkansas, and how I got to Arkansas. Uh, Bobby Roper – which played it at Arkansas, all SC, all Southwest Conference defensive end. <clears throat> he came to Alabama as a GA, and we were roommates as GAs when I finished uh, at Alabama in 65. And so I just said, well, I'll just go to Arkansas and finish my master's. And I was not going into coaching. I was going into the business world. And Matter of fact, I was actually selling insurance when I was finishing my college career. And anyway, uh, Coach Majors gets the job at Iowa State. And I remember walking into him because I had a baby, a young girl, and and all of a sudden, you know, I'm going to go with Coach Majors, I thought. So I go in and ask him uh, if he would hire me. And he looked at me and he said, you know, what can you coach? And I looked at it back and I said, well, if you coach, you can coach, you can coach anything. <laughs> and so anyway, but he went to Frank Brawls uh, and asked Frank uh, you know, about me and Frank told him, he said, you need to hire him. So I go there and uh, we had Jimmy Johnson, we had uh, Larry Lacewell, we had, I mean, mm. a great staff. And <clears throat> I was the B team coach. And so we're getting ready to play BYU. Larry Lacewell comes to me and he says, Jackie, I want you to coach the linebackers because we were playing a throwing football team and he knew that I had played linebacker. And so I did. And my linebacker that I coached, or we, they intercepted two passes against BYU and they won. So from that point on, I'm the linebacker coach. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next year, Larry leaves. Uh, Jimmy's the defensive coordinator. They so they I'm the linebacker. Jimmy leaves, and then all of a sudden, my third year and as a college coach, I'm the defensive coordinator. And then the fourth year, I become assistant head coach, defensive coordinator, and then coach took me to uh, uh, Pittsburgh with him, and. Matter of fact, he sent me to Pittsburgh to set everything up. We were at the Liberty Bowl, and I, as soon as the game was over with, I got a plane, flew to Pittsburgh, and I got off the plane, and I'm driving, going to, you know, Pitt, Pitt meaning the campus, and <clears throat> so I'm driving, and I'm looking at the trees, and I'm thinking, damn, they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> In December, and so I, I, I get into Pittsburgh and, and you know, set everything up before Kate, uh, Coach came. And when he came, then we hit the trail recruiting. Uh, we were fortunate that, you know, there was a little old witty kid out of yeah, uh, Hopewell, Hopewell High School <laughs> named Tony Dorsett. And uh, I remember the first day I went to the school to meet, they had a janitor room that they had cleaned out. And that was the meeting room for all the coaches coming in because they had three great players that year, uh, division one players. 
And so I'm, I'm waiting in line, go into the room, and all of a sudden the door burst open. And a guy walks in, and he says, who are you? And I said, Jackie Sherrill. He said, where are you from? I said, Pittsburgh, get out. He kicked me out of the high, the high school principal. Wow. Kicked me out of the high school. The very first time, I came back every day and became we became friends. And I even, uh, he even used me sometimes to substitute. And <laughs> the fraternal, the fraternal hadn't been to the high school. He didn't know the coaches. He had couldn't. So I'm standing there one day and, and uh, Joe comes running in and, and I introduced him to some of the coaches and <laughs> coaches. And Joe says, I'd like to see Ed Willemoski and Tony Dorsett. And I looked at my watch and I said, Joe, I've been here all day. I have an appointment. And he said, I'm only going to stay two, two minutes. And I said, Joe, I've been here all day. I have an, an appointment. He said, just please let me have two minutes and I'll be gone. I, I didn't have an appointment, so I was just <laughs> that. So he did. He went in and sat down because they were going to go visit Penn State. That was on a Wednesday or Thursday. They were going to go uh, visit Penn State on Friday and Saturday. So he went in, came out, and said two minutes. You know, he held to his word. You know, yeah. I, I wasn't going to let uh, anybody get close to him. Yeah. <laughs> He changed everything. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it. Uh, coach helped quite a bit, Coach Majors. You know, and this, uh, we're basically talking about Coach Majors. And, you know, I was fortunate. I played for Coach Bryant, coached for Coach Bryant, coached for Frank Burroughs, and coached for Coach Majors. And they all were different. And But Coach Majors was the best PR guy that's ever been. A college football coach, you know, he he can yeah. meet, you, meet you. And 15 years later, he could tell you, tell you your name. He could tell yeah. you where where he met you and what y'all were doing when he met you 15 years ago. Yeah, you know, one day, coach, when I first got to Tennessee, uh, everyone, most of the coaches were on the road recruiting. I can't recall the exact situation, but I took him someplace. And he liked me because I was from Pittsburgh, had Pittsburgh ties, went to Slippery Rock. And we, we had, I, I, I love the guy. Anyway, he sat for 20 minutes in the car and he talked about, I said to him, I said, coach, who was the greatest player you ever coached? I thought he talk, would say uh, Dorsett. You, you know, he said George Anmanson. Oh, yes. Now, I, I or, never heard of him. Or is a pure athlete. Yeah, he played quarterback for us at, at Iowa State. But he came out of, of uh, North Dakota. He was the high school. He was the high, he was the or he threw the shot put and he had the the best record in the U.S. Yeah, could run, and but he was big. He's six four, and yeah. playing great athlete. You talking about a kid play basketball, do all those things. Plus, as big as he was, he could run and. And he helped us win quite a few games. Yeah, that's what Coach Major said. It surprised me when he said that. And then he told a story, Coach, about um, the first football player that you guys signed. I remember this like it was yesterday. The kicker out of State College, Carson Long, was it? Carson Long. Carson Long. Yeah. And he said he signed him. He went down, got a commitment, a blizzard hit. He couldn't get back to pit. And he felt the whole time Blizzard was sent by Joe Paterno because he took a kicker out of State College. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the kicker was good now. He was the old conventional Lou Groza kicker. That, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We got him a square toe. We got him a weighted, you know, I was in charge of equipment too. So I got him a weighted toe. <laughs> and, and it had, you know, it's kind of like, you know, the steel toe. But the, yeah, Tom Dempsey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coach, why did, why did you and coach majors click? I mean, you, you mentioned you'd, you'd work, you played for bear Bryant, your GA dare, Frank Brawls. I know there's common ties there, but, but why did, why did you and coach majors? Why do you think you clicked the way you guys clicked? Well, I think that we were raised 
very similar. He was, you know, played for Coach Needle. I played for Coach Bryant. And those two guys, two coaches at that time were uh, very similar. Uh, you know, you had basically the same philosophy. You had uh, how you treated players, how you worked players. And, you know, we all talk about, but, uh, you know, coaches having relationships with your players. But, you know, everybody has a relationship. But the difference of the great coaches, i.e. Coach Majors, Coach Bryant, Neyland, is they have a personal relationship with the players. And that's yeah. something that Coach Majors was able to do is have a personal relationship with the players. And he stayed and had that connection with players forever. You know, he always went back to Iowa State. He always went back to Pitt. And he always went back to Tennessee for his players, not for Iowa State, not for Pittsburgh, and not for Tennessee. He went back for his players. Yeah. You know, uh, while he was at Tennessee, invariably, not every weekend, but oftentimes a kid would pop up in the building that played at Iowa State for him. Or a kid would pop on a Friday before a football game, and he'd be yeah. John Major's guest. Or a kid from Pitt would pop up. I remember, um, I, I could see the kid's face. He played at Pitt. He was from here. He, I, I can't think of his name right now. But there he was walking down the hallway, and because Coach Majors invited him back for a game. So you're exactly right. He, he loved his players and he stayed in touch with them. Oh, yeah. Well, all great coaches, you know, Coach Bryant uh, had a great association. And, you know, uh, you know, I don't put myself in Coach Bryant's shoes, but, you know, I have a pretty good relationship with, you know, all of our former players. You know, well, go ahead. Go ahead no, go ahead. go ahead. Go ahead, Colin. Okay. Um, when I was at Virginia Tech, Coach, I worked for Bill Dooley, who was close to John. And we hired a guy from West Virginia. I can't remember his name right now. And he was telling me a story one day. See, people forget this. And Brent, it's a little history lesson for you. Prior to John Majors going to Pitt, those previous six years, I believe Pitt won six games <clears throat> during that time. Well, and, the, the three previous years, they were 11 and one, 11 and, I mean, one in 11, one in 11, one in 11. Yeah. Pitt actually at that time, the administration behind closed doors. Yep. And yep. Of course, they won't say it today, but behind closed doors, they were going to give it one more shot. Yep. And if they, if they couldn't turn it around, then they were going to drop down to Carnegie Mellon and. Or the uh, Mac. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's what this guy from West Virginia told me. Sitting in Blackfoot told me that story. I said, wow, that's exactly right, Coach. You know, yep. So so why go to Pitt then, Coach Cheryl? I mean, why, why did you guys – I mean, I, I know Iowa State at the – I mean, every game's not on TV. Nobody probably really recognized around the country how successful no, you was, guys had been at Iowa State. Why go to Pitt? We were pretty good at <laughs> Iowa State. I know you were. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, it was an opportunity for Coach Majors, you know, to – and really – uh, coach never visited Pittsburgh. You know, he sent his uh -oh. brother. Yes, he sent his brother to go and and visit, and his brother told him, "You need to come." So you have to give the person that really sold Coach Majors going to Pittsburgh was his brother. Wow, I never knew that. So, what are you thinking when you guys drop in and see how 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 bad a shape it's in and how much work that's got to be done. What, what's, what's through your mind and coach major's mind, those first couple of months on the job there. I mean, you, you mentioned you went ahead to try to get things organized. I was, I would imagine you were starting from scratch at that point. What, what's going through your all's minds the first couple of months on that job? Well, I wasn't smart enough to really <laughs> tell you all I knew is, you know, you put your head down, your ass up and you start digging. And that's what we did. And you just go out and recruit and, and you know, coach football. And, and we did. We signed 76 players that first year. And, you know, fortunately, we had, you know, Coach Majors being the PR guy he was and being able to sell the administration, 
there, they, there's not in, um, was not administration in the country that was going to allow you to sign 76 players. And, yep. you know, so they, uh, uh, they did it, This was going to be their last shot. And if it worked, you know, so they, <clears throat> they threw the hat in the ring and said, let's, let's do it. But coach majors convinced them to, that we could do it. Did, did yeah. you did you have any idea how close they were to dropping down? I mean, would you have taken? Would you guys have taken that job had you known that situation? I, I doubt it. But you know, we, you know, there's a lot of things that administrators do behind closed doors that no one knows. There's a lot of things on that in Washington D.C. that's done that nobody knows either. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, he he mentioned that to me, that guy up at Virginia Tech, and he said the issue was they were trying to get out of contracts with West Virginia and Penn State and Maryland, whoever, and those schools didn't want to give up. It, they wanted a lot of money to get out of the contracts. Well, they didn't have it <clears throat> first or didn't want to commit it. You know, when you, when you have that dismal of a football team, you do not have – people in the stands you do not have yeah. alumni that's going to give you money so you don't have the resources to do anything and at that time you know they the administration actually was you know subsidizing or the university you know the football program and the drain on the university was too big yeah, you know, I, I remember uh, my cousin was either a trustee or he was pretty influential. His name was Mickey Tigano from Steubenville, Ohio. And I remember you guys went, I believe, I, correct me if I'm wrong on this. Did you go to, did you play Arizona State that first year in a bowl game? Yeah, played them in the right. Sun Bowl. That's it. You would have thought you guys were playing in the Super Bowl. That was one of the biggest things to happen in Pittsburgh at a time when the Steelers were winning. And you guys went to that bowl game and that was, it's all people talked about, really. Yeah, the, the, <clears throat> all of a sudden, the, the excitement in the first year, but you got to understand that <clears throat> we had help from a little old kid that was wearing number 33. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he excited, you know, you know, everywhere. And we go play Northwestern and had AstroTurf, but the AstroTurf, <clears throat> when you're, it's, you know, cold or slick, it's slick if it's rainy. So they, <clears throat> it's not like the new turf today, but make a long story short, I ordered shoes out of Canada that had spikes on, not metal spikes, but they were little rubber spikes. They probably had 500 spikes on the, the bottom of a tennis shoe. I mean, a football shoe. They were heavy, but you know, they bite. and Tony set the freshman Russian record that day. He didn't slip wearing those shoes. <laughs> That's a good story. That's a great story. <laughs> so uh, b before I get back to Tony, because it's not all obviously about Tony, how, how do you convince 76 guys to come to that program? What, what was, what was your That's message and what was coach Ma major's message to those guys? Very simple. That's Southern charm. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't uh, understand a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, that's right. that's Laurel, those coaches. <laughs> yeah, I'm going, even, you know, Tony, I remember taking, my mother sent me some pecan pies, and and so I took uh, Miss Dorset uh, pecan pie, and I was the only person that ever sat at the kitchen table. And Tony came in from school, and I'm in there eating pecan pie with Miss Dorset. Miss <laughs> Dorset, and Tony uh, got upset. You know, nobody else can do this. Why in the hell are you? Doing it? <laughs> yeah, that was Southern charm. You're right. So, did you get? I mean, did you just recruit different? I mean, it was that the, compared to, to to other schools in the Northeast at that time. That was it. The in all seriousness, the charm and the personality that that you think got everybody's attention? Well, again, you go back to relationships. You had to develop a personal relationship. And, 
you know, you go from Al Romano that was out in New Syracuse, New York. I mean, then you go all the way down to uh, Florida, the kids out of Florida. Joe Avizano recruited the kids out of Florida, uh, kids out of Georgia, kids out of Mississippi. I went into Mississippi and recruited, you know, Hugh Green, Hugh Green and Ricky Jackson out of Florida, yeah. Mr. Jones. I mean, you can go on and on. Uh, you know, at that time, you had a lot of kids from the South, especially the black kids, would go north. And the first one that ever did that was Duffy Daugherty. He yeah, went in Texas. Got, he went in and got kids out of Texas and other areas to go to Michigan State. And that's how Michigan State became great players because the speed came out of the South, the size came out of the Northeast. That's, that's well put. That's very well put. <laughs> so, so coach, back, back to John Majors. I mean, how would you describe him to, to people who, who didn't, who didn't know him um, or, or maybe a younger generation that never even got to see him coach or, or spend any time with him? What is, what is John in, in a nutshell, who is John Majors? Who was John Majors? He was a, a very intelligent and very intelligent football, but he, had the sense of being able to relate to people. Uh, and he also was a very, very positive person. And he also, you know, was the little uh, bunny that you wind up and never stop. <laughs> so, but he made people feel very comfortable around him. You know, yeah, that doesn't mean that, you know, our relationship was that he, allowed me to do everything and he also allowed me to do the discipline and so you know there's times kids would go do some things and come and tell me the truth but they were afraid and didn't tell coach majors the truth because yeah. <laughs> they didn't you know, really to know. <laughs> you know you know coach i think you know david moon he was very close to john who's only like a son well, about four or five years ago, David called me and he said, listen, I want you to help me do something. I said, what? He said, we're going to research how many coaches John had that went on to be head coaches. So we sat down and David did most of the work. But I remember looking at that list and thinking to myself, there's 36 men on this list who went on to be head coach, not high school. I'm talking about small colleges, uh, Division One colleges and the NFL. Yeah, it, I don't think Bear Bryant, Joe Paterno, any of those guys had that many coaches. I could be wrong, but that's a lot of guys. No, he. I think he did. I think he had the record. Um, but you go back, you know, when you look at football, when I say your coach majors or people that played for Coach Bryant, there's two things you were going to do. You were going to teach technique and fundamentals. And that's you know, football has never changed. It's still a physical game, but if you don't have technique and fundamentals, uh, you can run. You can run around all you want to, but you're not going to win many games. You know, coach. I mean, when you look at that number, and then obviously look at your history, you went on to be a head coach, a successful head coach. It sounds like he let his assistants coach. You know, a lot of guys, particularly in this day and age, head coaches want to micromanage. It seems like he lets you guys as assistants coach football. Well, he let the coaches that could coach. Now, the one <laughs> position you did not want to coach, yeah. coach was the defensive backs. Yeah. You know, the defensive back coach caught hell. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, I learned that. Coach, I learned that when I got to Tennessee. Uh, from Ron Zook. Ron Zook used to take 15 bags of sugar before practice and put it in his mouth. They said, what the hell are you doing, Zook? He said, I got to keep up with Coach Bates because <laughs> he's going to live down in my practice. Yep, man, that's true. The defensive back coach caught hell. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, you know, yep. So what's your fondest memory of Pitt, uh, of your time at Pitt? Because, you know, this is obviously – They've got the Johnny Majors Classic coming up. What what's your what's your fondest memories of your time at Pittsburgh? The people, you know, it's everybody talks about you know and asks the same question. Which 
which job was the best. It's not the place, it's the people. It's yeah. not the place for the coach, it's the players. But the people, it, and that's why Coach Majors actually went back to Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, I asked him not, you know, I begged him not to go back. And I said, Coach, there's no way that you can reproduce and yeah. Yeah, it, it, you just can't. Uh, but he was very hurt uh, emotionally and inside uh, when he got let go at, Penn, at Tennessee and how he like, got let go. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that was a hard thing for everyone. Um, you know, um, the other going back to Coach Majors, he, he had a way, he had a way with people. Like everything you're saying, I'm going to amplify a little bit. He had a way with people where – he, 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 you wanted to be better around him. Yes. Well, that's no matter who you same, were. That's the same thing I've always said about Coach Bryant. <clears throat> he would take an average player and make him a good player, a good player to out, uh, outstanding, an outstanding player to a great player. Uh, yeah. You know, and I, the first scrimmage we had uh, at Pittsburgh, Tony Dorsett, the first touch he had, he went like 76 yards. Coach Major running after him, jumping up and down, hollering, <laughs> screaming. He called everybody up and he says, that's a football player. You know, it just, and he made the players feel very good and made them excited about playing for him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, we're going to have some players, Coach, that, played at Pitt, Dave Janicek yes. is going to be on. And John Hanhauser, who's from Erie, where I'm from, yes. I knew his older brother. I didn't know John. John's five years younger than me. But John's agreed to come on. And I've had some conversation with John. And, and, and everything he says to me is about how much he loved John Majors. I mean, he would, I mean, he always came back to that, about how he made him a better person, made him a better coach. And great coaches like yourself, and all the other great coaches out there, that is one of their attributes, is you yeah. make a person better. Now, the players will t I'm not going to tell you a lot of fine memories about me because I did the discipline in this <laughs> yeah. off-season yeah. program. Yeah. You know, yeah. ask, when you get them on, ask them about the the rest of the mat room in, in the old uh, basketball arena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get that. And you know the other thing, too, um, they, they refer to uh, Tim Karen as the big guy. So I'm sure that when you were in that room with those players, Tim was in there too, probably. Yeah, oh, yeah. He took care of them. And, yeah. you know, there's, there's been – in this profession, you're around a lot of people. But, you know, for the player, uh, that trainer is very, very important because he's the guy – it's kind of like the mother that takes care of the baby. And yeah. so he, the trainer takes care of you. Well, you know, and, and that, know. that trainer, Coach Majors, trusted him implicably with everything. Coach, Coach, they had a relationship that was, you don't have, you can't have that today because trainers <laughs> report to a guy above him and they report to someone else. It's hard to have that relationship today. But if you were in Tim Karen's office, Coach, or you were walking down the hall with Tim Karen, he would stop. So I would say, what's wrong? And he'd say, Coach Major's in the building. No, 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 Coach Major's is recruiting. He's not in the building. And sure enough, Coach Major was in the building. <laughs> Tim stopped what he was doing, and he went and found John, and they, 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 they sorted out what they had to do. I've never yeah. seen a relationship like that between two men. Really yeah. close. They were extremely close, you know, because he trusted him extremely yeah. well. Well, Coach, you've had an amazing career. You had a great run at Iowa State with him, Pittsburgh, then you went on to be a head coach and had great success. And I know Coach Majors was a huge part of uh, developing you as a, as a young coach moving forward along with your time with, with Coach Bryant as well. Uh, we thank you for spending some time with us today to talk about the, the life of Coach Majors, your time with him at Iowa State and Pittsburgh. And um, looks like you might be able to have a whistle around your neck, and coach a little bit more if you if you wanted to. Um, so we appreciate your time. Thank you for I'll, everything. I want to close with this real quick. I think you and I should start a campaign that Pitt this this fall, Coach. You should go to the Pitt Tennessee game, and we should start a campaign where they give you a national championship ring because you're the reason half those players are there. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. 
you know, I did, I did recruit quite a few of them. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that. So. Coach, thanks again for your time. Thanks for the short, the stories. We certainly do appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. Thanks Talk coach. You guys later. Appreciate it.